Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee, I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like in the trades. I appreciate you stopping by. Okay, today we've got this super cool Busher Big B Barry Sax. Problem is, they broke the strap ring. We're gonna use a product to try to do a silver solder joint without wrecking the silver plate so we can keep this close to original all right let's go so what we've got going on is i've already got a ring that we're going to use that is a busher ring off of a vintage horn but the plate was a different size you see the original plate here and those plates were a different size so I got the ring off, that's good. Typically, when you run a silver solder joint, the braze joint, they are so hot, it will burn off any silver plate that you have. So we're gonna use Cold Shield to protect the silver plate while we get this ring off. The first thing that we have to do is we have to get all traces of soft solder off. If you heat this to braze it, or silver solder, you will crystallize any soft solder. So all of this has to come off. I'm gonna use a rotary style tool. We have to remove all the traces. When you're using your rotary tool and a cut cutter like this, you wanna make sure you're not spinning too fast because you'll actually melt the soft solder to the cutter. That's bad. It ruins your cutter. This is a job that's not about speed. There we go. Back down to brass. Okay. So we have that coated good. I'm using a Smith Little Torch. And I'm gonna be using a number six tip. Kick my fan on. There it goes. Doesn't take long at all. Now we're going to let this cool on its own. I'm going to add, I've added my flux. I'm going to put some cold shield. On either side. I won't use as big of a flame this time. 
want it to be very controlled. For the braise, so very small. Just like that, we'll let that cool, and I'll drop it in the pickle, clean that off, we've got a good solid joint, flake off the cold, it's not even hot to my touch, that's what's crazy, I don't know what that stuff is, but it's pretty amazing. Here's our part, save the silver got a good joint didn't burn off the silver the client will be very pleased now I'm going to use low temp silver to put it back on because it has a white color it doesn't turn gray like soft solder does We're going to use that same number six. Now we're going to go with a really, really fine flame. And I'm going to tack it into place. And by tacking it and controlling my heat, I don't have to have any kind of a clamp. You just work your way around, tack it, and move. This is a this is a welding technique. But you're just controlling your heat. Let that cool off. And we'll neutralize the flux. Harris Stay Clean Paste. It's pretty good stuff there. I use baking soda in my water to neutralize the acid of the flux. Now we're going to run a heat and wipe operation. I'm going to make a little bit bigger of a flame. Less intensity with the oxygen. Gonna get in my rhythm. Heat, white. Heat, white. Heat, white. After you clean up of what little bit heat and wipe there is, I like to bring in my brass blade and dress it off. Makes it look more like a factory joint. And brass won't scar brass. If you do this with steel, you run the risk of scarring the brass. Because steel is harder than brass. Okay, we'll take this over and get it cleaned up. Come in and get all this cleaned up. It's going to take some of the dirt away from the body for a few few months and then it'll all kind of tarnish back together in six months they'll never know 
Now, if you were doing a restoration on this, you could use the original flange, make a new one, or find a vintage one, and then re-silver plate the whole thing. That would certainly be an option for you to do. Honestly, the, this client, they didn't care if I put a modern ring on it. It was just me that wanted to make it, keep it old school and keep it in the theme of the instrument. So they were very gracious to be lenient with me. I get hung up about that stuff sometimes, maybe too much. Oh, just put anything on there, Wes, that'll work. Yeah, sometimes I just can't bring myself to doing that. I just kind of blend all this back in. And there we go. Got it off and on. A new, no burning the silver plate. We kept it all intact. That's what we love to see. Well, all right, friends. This one came out great. I'm very happy and pleased. This is going to blend back together in probably six months or so. It'll take on the tarnish of the rest of the instrument. So I'm going to leave this not waxed. And just really thrilled with the way that that came out. That cold shield really comes in clutch in some situations. S silver plating, where you're trying to do a braze joint. It will also, if you have very fragile lacquer, it works wonderful on that. I've got some other videos of me testing it. I don't use it very often, but when I do, it c always comes in clutch. I would say get a tub. It's definitely worth it. I hope you got some tips and tricks on silver soldering. It's a nuanced approach. It really is. You can do the same thing with a really big flame, but you're going to torch a whole lot of stuff. When you, when you pull back and get the, use a Smith Little Torch and really just using the super tiny flames, think of a jeweler putting on the diamond inset in a ring. Just the tiniest flame. It generates immense amount of heat. If you approach it from that angle, I think it'll probably help you in your work. Also with your regular solder joints. Clips are important. I believe in the no stress mounting methods. So I use the least amount of pressure to hold a brace. It's all about the fit of the part for me. And I also, I believe in the tack method. So I tack a spot here and I tack a spot there and I just kind of move around. And that way I'm not ever overflowing the joint. However, I am getting a good flow. I am getting full penetration. That's, that's important. You can't, you can't have a cold joint. You will know if your soft solder joint is a cold joint and going to fail if the solder stays gray or if it stays balled up. If you do not actually heat it enough to where it wicks inside, you have a cold joint that will fail. Once again, it's a little bit of a nuanced approach. Instead of just heating up a bunch of stuff, that was one of the things when I was in repair school, when we went on the tour of manufacturers, their soldering approach was totally different than what we were learning in school. In school, we were learning to be very spot specific. Whereas when we went on the tour of manufacturers, man, they were heating that stuff up. They were really, it was changing colors. And it would, the whole joint would just, it would just suck it all in. And our teacher said, well, that's because they want great penetration and it's going to another step of assembly. It still has many more assembly processes before it finally gets to buffing. And when you're out in the real world, you want that joint to be strong, secure, and you want a minimal amount of cleanup. That's the operating, that's the MO, right? So just expounding and always getting deeper on those kind of things. And then when you switch to a 70-30 solder, which stays white, which blends great with silver plate, because it is a white solder instead of the gray 60-40 or 50-50 solders that we use, they melt at a very low temperature, whereas the 70-30 is a higher temperature. But the trade-off is the tensile strength. So if I have a joint on a horn that I know is that's going to be under a lot of stress, then I use a 70-30 solder versus using a 50-50 solder. And so as you get out in the field and you start doing things more, and I'm sure my buddies Ernie Arruda and Jason Brown and some other guys that follow the channel a lot will probably also comment, chime on in, let me know what I missed and what I forgot. 
Thanks, everybody. We appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. This is Wesley signing out.